Okay, I don't know if you can see this that well, but this is my Nexus phone. I have an app called Torque. It's, it's located right there. Anyway, what I do is I went online and I got this. It's uh, called the Multi Protocol OBD Scan Tool. Um, BD2, OBD2. And I got this from China. Some of them work, some of them don't. This is like the Elm version. So this adapter here will work with this car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go plug it in. I'm going to show you where to plug it into the port. And the scan tools cost a hundred and something dollars. So this cost uh, 15 bucks. And this is five dollars on my phone for the software to purchase it off of the Play Store on Google. And you can you can uh, get this software for any phone. So you got a car like a newer car like this, especially this model, you definitely could use this tool and save yourself a couple hundred bucks. Okay, so we're in the car now. Right here is your panel. You're going to take this off. This is also where your fuse panel is. And you can see the adapter right there. What we're going to do is we're going to plug in this adapter to there. Just like that. Then you're going to turn the init, uh, key on to auxiliary. And then we're going to turn our scan tool on, and then you can get a reading of uh, some information on the car. Now, if you have a check engine light, it's going to appear. I think either I think it's either here or here, but the, somewhere in that area, you'll see it. And if you hook that tool up, you can actually read the OBD codes and get the uh, P codes. And uh, I did have an engine misfire in, in the past because I had bad fuel, and bad fuel will give you a misfire code. But if you don't get it, like after so many driving cycles, it'll clear itself. But uh, if you ever have to do work, like you have a vacuum leak, you get a, a code, you can hook this tool up and clear your own code and save yourself, you know, a hundred bucks from taking it down to the shop to do it. So it's just a nice, convenient little thing to have. You can't do a lot of the Hyundai OEM stuff with that. It's just, just basic, read the check engine light, get your, get your code, clear the codes, and... Uh, you can monitor some stuff with this too, like you can monitor your coolant temperature because this car does not have a cooler temperature uh, gauge and you can you can monitor your, uh, I think it's transmission the temperature on there, your O2 sensors, your uh, fuel status, like I said I covered that earlier in, like, in the other take so I'm not going to go into high detail about this device but um, maybe one day I'll actually take you through the paces in the car and show you exactly what this can do but right now, that's not what this video is about. So, if you have a misfire, get yourself a tool like this. It'll really help you out. Um, now, most people would just replace the four spark plugs and swap them out before running the second test. So, if you have misfire, put two four new spark plugs in, clear the code, run it again, and then, like I said, also swap your coils out. And if you still got the misfire code, then uh, you're going to have to uh, think about replacing the wire harness and then going back further into the car and the ignition system. But the, I'd, I'm not going to get into that here. I'm just talking about spark plugs today, too, now. So let's do a simple test. you got a spark plug like this. Okay. Um, there's going to be two tests you're going to do. You're going to take uh, uh, A, item A, which is going to be, I don't know if I can see this on here. Yeah, that looks good right there. Okay. You're going to take a, a measurement from inside here, right there, to this part on the outside here. Okay, you can still see that. And uh, if you got, you're going to set your uh, meter to continuity. So when you touch uh, your leads together, let me get the leads here. These two leads here, like this, you're gonna get continuity on your ohm meter. Um, so you're gonna measure inside the tip here to here, and you should have continuity. If you have continuity. That's the first test you're gonna run. If you don't have continuity, uh, your spark plug's bad. So. And if the continuity, if the spark plug is bad, it could cause uh, an open in the spark plug, 
uh, misfire, engine skipping, or hesitation on your spark plug. So the second test you're going to run is uh, you're going to check uh, 50M ohms and you need to be set your ohm meter to 50M or above like ohms and you need to get a 50M and above reading for this spark plug to be normal and 50M or below um, you need to replace it. And how you do the test for, the, for this is you measure from this part here to this part and like I said if you're 50 or above it's normal and uh, if it's bad the uh, carbon or the insulator could be cracked it could be the cause but you might not be able to see the crack in the insulator and the symptoms would be engine skipping or hesitation so I hope that helps you guys with the integrity uh, spark that. plug check What I mean by that is, uh, see this plastic tubing? I had another video about a defective wire coal wire harness. If I open this tubing up, I'll show you what I mean by it. See that red wire there? That was rubbing up. Get the engine cover here. When you put the engine cover on, it was rubbing up against here. So you got to be careful how you put the engine cover on and how this wire sits. It has to sit on top of the coils just like this. I put a piece here, a piece here, and a piece here. They're not taped or anything. They're just sitting there just to protect. When it bounces up and down, vibration, it won't wear through the insulator. So I won't have to spend, you know, a lot of money on that uh, wire harness. There we go. Okay. Fuel injectors are back here. And what you do is you put an oscilloscope or long screwdriver on the tips of, on the tops of the solenoids, the fuel injectors, and you'll hear the solenoid click. And what you're going to listen for is an even click on the uh, fuel injectors. Um, this ensures that they're all good. If one's not clicking right, you might want to add some uh, uh, injector cleaner into your fuel tank, run the car for a couple days, and then recheck because it could be clogged and that could cause a, a problem an engine code. Uh, you're going to check your fuel pressure, uh, check out check out your timing with the timing light. Um, the timing is computer controlled but you can still stick a timing light down here and check. Um, if the timing belt is a tooth off it could cause the engine not to run right. Get your check engine light. Check PC valve, PC valve operation which is right here. Um, you take that out and put a new one in. They're not that expensive. Uh, you want to check to see if it's opening and closing properly. Um, if all else fails, uh, you can check for a vacuum leak test. You could run propane just along the hoses as you run the engine. And if you have the engine RPM changes, then you, you have a vacuum leak. That's how you check it. Um, if you don't hear anything, then uh, I take this to a pro because then it's beyond me. So these are just some basic tests you can do to eliminate stuff. Because, you know, if you have a bad fuel pump and the fuel pressure is not coming in properly, it could cause your engine to stall, hesitate, act weird. And that could be based upon a hot, sunny day or a cold day. Spark plugs, like I said, if the insulator is cracked or there's not uh, inside the spark plug's damaged, it could cause misfire. A uh, bad coil can also cause erratic be engine behavior. By swapping coils, you can uh, eliminate that. So you're going to want to uh, go through all those tests, and that should pretty much cover like 99% of the stuff that you need to know dealing with your spark plugs or your ignition. Okay, now that I got my wire brushes, um, your spark plugs. Okay, let's get back to spark plugs. I suggest you clean the threads on the spark plug. Uh, use a wire brush, like the ones here. I'm just going to brush off the uh, all this crud around the threads, and then uh, you're going to want to uh, clean off the this part here. Clean all in there. Make sure it's all nice and clean. And then uh, do not use anti seize on these. You can just put these in and torque these down. If you remove these yearly, 
one year to clean all of it, put it back in as part of your service, and one year to replace them, you'll never have a problem getting these spark plugs out of the holes. Now if you wait five, six years and do this, these things can, can become seized in there. So you want to take your spark plugs out once a year, clean them, and then on the second year, depending on how many miles you got in your car, replace them. So that's what I do. Um, now when you put the spark when you put the spark plugs back in, use your uh, use your socket with the rubber grommet in there, like that. And you're just gonna put it back down in the hole, and you're gonna hand tighten till till it's hand tightened because you don't want to cross threads. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your your uh, poof, torque wrench and the setting for this spark plug for this car is 17.5 to 21.7 pounds of torque for the spark plug and it's the same for all four spark plugs so I'm using the regnet method and feel the resistance when tightening but I suggest you do not do this I've done this before and like I said see that little crack there I don't know if you can see that Yep, you can see it right there. I had to glue that because tightened down this wire harness too tight, broke the plastic. So use a torque wrench, you know. Use a torque wrench on your spark plugs as well. Hyundai suggests these torque sends for a reason. Okay, so you do not want to strip the threads out of the spark plug hole, so use a torque wrench. Place the coils back into cylinders. This is the coil right here. If you're not, this is the first time you're doing this job. And then tighten these bolts right here. Put the spark plug, put the coil back in here and show you. This bolt right here. It's going to be 2.9 to 4.3 foot pounds. Connect the wire harnesses back, which is right here. Back to the plugs, to the coils. And reinstall the wire harness bracket, which is this thing here. And this is going to be 2.9 to 4.3 foot pounds. I suggest the 2.9 setting. <laughs> Just lightly hand tighten these, just snug, don't crank on them. And then reinstall the plastic cover, which is this one right here. And these bolts are going to be 2.9 to 4.3 foot pounds. And you're done. So I'm not going to show you how to put this back together. You, you can figure this out yourself, it's pretty basic. The service costs. It's 55 to 60 bucks at your local Hyundai dealership. Hyundai suggests you replace your plugs every your spark plugs every 48,000 kilometers or two years. If you use NGK spark plugs, you can go 96,000 kilometers before you need to replace them. Uh, every second year, I replace them with new ones. It's up to you how you do this, but um, this is Hyundai's recommended service interval for this car. So anyway, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, leave a comment, and look for more videos to come in the future. Have a good day.